Welcome back to Tig Time. I'm Mr. Tig, and we're finishing up with part three of a three-part series on a multi-process welding machine. Now, take a look at the show notes, and you'll see part one and part two. Part one being the Tig welding, part two being the MIG welding. Well, part three is stick welding, sometimes known as arc welding. And i got to tell you, I haven't stick welded since I graduated from Cali College in 1973. So I did a shout out to a partner of mine, Dan Klingman, to ask him what's the best stick rod to use for a beginner. And he told me 7018. He says it's a great rod and it'll actually weld itself. So we're going to test it out with this machine. Anyway, I'm going to uh, I'm going to walk around and show you the setup of this machine. And you will have seen in part one, I put all the TIG gear on, took it off, put the MIG gear on, took it off, and now I'm to stick welding. Yeah, so there's not a lot of functions on here. And what you're going to see is that this button right here shows a cartoon of whether you're in the MIG mode, whether you're in the TIG mode, and it's got a little stick cartoon. So put it on stick, and once you do that, you only have two functions to even look at. And what this function is here, it's the open circuit voltage. It's already preset on the machine. Now the variability is going to be amperage. So I've already practiced just a little bit with a couple of samples, and I found that 105 amps is the one that I want to use. I'm going to do a fillet weld, and they're typically you know, the tougher of the welds, so I thought I'd give it a shot. So uh, easy setup. If you take a look at this, the uh, stick electrode holder, <coughs> it goes into the DC positive port. This right here is the ground and it goes into the DC negative port. So let me put my gear on and uh, we'll see how it welds. Okay, I just did a little fillet weld here with the uh, 7018 1 8 inch diameter stick electrode. And it, it welded up pretty nice. And again, I haven't done this for years and years, but it, it, it leaves a coating on there and you have to chip it off. And uh, again, I haven't used one of these in ages. So I, I let it cool down for three or four, maybe even five minutes. And now I'm going to chip it off and let's see what the results are. Okay, my, my start off was, uh, was pretty rough. I just didn't get it, uh, uh, the puddle established on both sides, but pretty quickly it, it flowed in nicely and uh, you know, left a pretty good bead. Um, I practiced on a couple of pieces. I did a lap weld right here and I was running at it about 105 amps, probably a little bit hot. Uh, the steel itself is only about 1 8 inch thick. Um, I did another fillet weld here so I was just playing with the amperage, and you're going to have to do the same thing. But what I was doing was dragging the rod. Uh, so after all this, I think I could probably uh, uh, say that the welder worked very good, but the person operating just did okay. Okay, I want to recap parts one, two, and three of this series. And part one was TIG welding. Uh, again, it has DC and it has a lift start on it, just a, uh, just a reminder. It doesn't have AC, so you're not going to get the aluminum welding out of it that you think. Uh, part two was MIG welding. And again, I'm not an expert at MIG welding, but it did a pretty decent job. And part three was stick welding. Hadn't done it in a long time, it was kind of fun, and it did a pretty good job as well. You know, so Joe, in conclusion to this, 
finding a utility machine that's around a thousand dollars this machine did a very nice job so uh, I appreciate your question and I want to thank everyone for watching TIG Time I'm Mr. TIG